Hi, I'm Tom Joy, a systems engineer at McNaught McKay Electric Company from the Michigan region. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Wittenstein Simco Servo Drive. This servo drive is part of a larger system of products made by Wittenstein called ITOS. The ITOS product portfolio includes a complete package of wheels, bearings, gearboxes, motors, and drives, primarily intended for the AGV market. There are some really nice features here. This system is very compact as a single integrated unit. It has standard options for dynamic mechanical brakes and secondary encoders for speed control and additional safety features. But the main part of this system I wanted to focus on today is the Simco drive. This drive is powered by 24 to 48 volts DC. Sizes range from 7 amps up to 100 amps continuous output. It comes in both IP20 versions like this one on the screen and an IP65 style perfect for AGVs or other on-machine applications. There are a number of communication options available, including Ethernet IP, CAN Open, Profibus, and EtherCAT. This model is rated to 50 amps continuous or 2.5 kW. The latest model that was just released by Wittenstein is the Simco 2100. Pictured here is the IP65 version, showing the connectorization, including dual port communications, a temperature sensor, safety I.O., safety encoder emulation, and safe torque off. Additional safety features include safe stop one, safe brake control, safe brake test, and safe position. This drive is rated to 5 kW or 100 amps continuous and 180 amps peak output. All the Wittenstein Simco drives use a configuration software called Motion GUI. If we walk through some of these setup and configuration screens, on the first boot up screen here, you choose your communication for Ethernet IP, that would be TCP IP. The default address is set to 192.168.100.1. If that works, you can click Connect at the top of the screen. Once you're connected to the drive, here's the main menu. On the left-hand bar are set up and configuration screens for your motor, tuning, limits, I.O. points, and homing. On the top right is an option called Motion Tasks, you can see here, which is a built-in motion controller. You can see the No Warnings and No Errors buttons on the bottom of your screen, which will toggle green or red accordingly. There's also a yellow button to toggle between local PC control for initial setup and major parameter changes and PLC control. Then from the left-hand options bar, if we flip through these screens here, uh, in power, You'll see the default values, and you can set DC bus chopper threshold there for regen. On the units button, you can choose rotary or linear units and make selections for your desired units in the program and add a gear ratio if needed. And then on feedback, you can choose your feedback uh, resolver or encoder style and enter required data there. Under motor parameters, you can select a Wittenstein catalog part number or if using a third-party motor, directly enter the nameplate data. Once that is done, you'll need to click Commutation and Calculate Offset to set up motor commutation. On the Limits screen, you can set Position, Speed, XL, D-Cell, and Current Limits. Then in a Current Velocity and Position Loop tuning screens, uh, you can manually adjust gains for each PID loop as required. And at that point, everything is ready to go. You can upload these parameters to the PLC by clicking Read Values from Drive. You can write values to the drive also or save your configuration file. And that's it. This drive is actually pretty easy to work with and set up for initial configuration. Wittenstein also has a set of add-on instructions for the Rockwell Logix controllers. Here's a screenshot of some of the typical motion tags you would see related to motion instructions, homing, and start and stop, for instance. Thank you for watching this tech support video on the Wittenstein Simco Servo Drive. For more videos like these, please visit and subscribe to the McNaughton McKay YouTube channel.